Hi, everyone. This is me and Brian Parker again. We're back, you know, after long, long days of research that Brian has been doing to investigate and, and kind of come up with a solution for allowing a Blazor virtualization component to receive multiple sources, very diverse sources in terms of execution and nature, you know, in terms of resolution, you know, into the same component. And we talked to a lot of people and people recommended, oh, check the type. Some other people said, well, create three components. And then Mr. Parker here seems like he has a different thought. What do you think? Hi, Brian. It's good to see you, brother. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, yes, I was left with a lot of turmoil. I was um, left beating my head against uh, everyone's ideas and trying to get something that actually sort of work <laughs> uh -huh. and and be feasible to use. And um, so I've come up with something that's a, a little bit uh, unique. Um, it's a way of uh, initializing mm -hmm. components in a sort of a new way. Um, because this particular pro problem is that we can't really know what the type is in advance. And there's so many different types, it's really hard to um, template that. So the best way to template it was through a signature of a method. Mm -hmm. You can't, up until recently, you really can't initialize a component with a method. But I worked out a way. So let me describe this to you. So let me open our little component. So what I did is I created a parameter mm -hmm. called action, and it passes as a act as a uh, a parameter of the function, or well, the action is the actual the component itself. Mm -hmm. So it'll just take a second to wrap your head around that. So, so this wanna... is be virtualize action. And T item. So so B virtualizes the component, right? The base? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So All right. uh, and notice I'm also taking use of this. So it's um I'll explain that in a little while because okay. we can use because we can use a subcomponent to define the setup okay. as well. Okay, so the tricky thing I did was this, okay, oh, yeah. which allows me to do so I've wired up uh, two different uh, applications here to uh, consume the library. Uh -huh. I've got a I've got Wasm and the server side. So we'll okay. open up the Wasm. We'll open up the Wasm one first. Okay. And I've made a few different um, versions of the weather forecast. Mm -hmm. So so the weather forecast is this is the standard one we see. Okay. Then this is where, how you'd use it if you were just using Virtualize. So I'm just um, putting this out there. So Virtualize is actually a very flexible component. You can actually throw a collection at it and it'll just work, right? But it won't take an enumerable. It has to be a collection. Okay. Okay. Or it has to take a delegate. Okay. We want to get to the stage uh, where it's a lot easier to use than that. So I've got two different versions here where I'm using my new component. So we've got the... This way here, which is using the method I was just describing to you. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So here, configure, remember, is an action. So this action gets called right at the very start. So if we look in here, I've wired up that action here. So this, act this actually calls a function on your parent component to configure it. Okay. What do you think of that? So you're basically, so so your configuration forecast is a method that takes in a base component as input parameter, yep. and then it sets this. Ah, oh, I see. And this is supposed to be implemented by the consumers. Yes. Of this. Okay. Okay. Now you don't have to set up a method. You can say that's a bit complicated. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at how I did it in the server-side version, you can actually set it up as a Lambda, a Lambda expression. Okay, so you can pass just a straightforward Lambda that takes in the configuration and sets uh, no. the source right away. Yeah. And then, so this way you don't have to comply with a particular model. No, you, or you don't have to write any C-sharp code to, um, that satisfies that condition. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. Okay, I see where okay. you're going. Okay. Okay, so essentially, I'm calling a method within the B virtualization 
called set source. Now set source has three different where is it? Uh, no, here we go. Hmm. I'll just minimize all this. Sorry, the screens are getting me. I have um, three different set sources at the moment and we can add more as we as we deem necessary. We have one that takes in a collection, which is basically what the virtualization component already does. This one will also take in an enumerable, which it doesn't do. And this one will take in a the configuration for an ADATA endpoint. Okay. Okay. Now, there are some obvious ones that we need to uh, include here, but I, I, I sort of hit the um, ones that I wanted to hit uh, to make sure that this will work. And the other ones can be, they'll be pretty trivial to implement. Okay. <clears throat> now. So, 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 so let me ask you this, Brian. So, yeah. so, so let's go, let's dive a little bit. Let's go. So, so go into sit source for a little bit. Expand that guy real quick. Yep. Sit source. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit at, uh, at, you got me at a hello there, you know, just looking at, <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is so, so cool, so, brother, you know. Yeah, uh, so, so not breaking uh, your rules with um, brokers and services. So everything's set up with a broker and a service. So we have a broker, which is an API, uh, which is just a standard data source broker. And a data source broker, all it has to do is basically supply this task, mm -hmm. which, which is the delegate, the underlying virtualized component basically needs but this is um doesn't have the uh it doesn't have the leakage of the models that it requires does that okay. make sense yep. okay so yeah. you did oh this is this is pretty cool you're basically saying let me provide you with overloads yep so uh, so i've got my, my one broker the, the, the sorry the interface definition of my broker and now i've got three different brokers here you know you just you 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 might, sir, you might have just invented a brand new pattern here, yeah, and yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. How come Blazor components don't have override capabilities? Sorry, uh, over overload capabilities. Ooh, so, so the well, exact same component, but with different parameters. So the exact same name, but with different parameters. That's basically what you did here, except that yeah. you did it programmatically in C sharp. Yes. Yes. You're mm. a smart guy. You know that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've got yeah, yeah. So I've got an API broker and I've got a collection broker, and they're all um, basically providing the same interface. And you'll see uh, here uh, when I call this function here called create service on every one of them uh, here. I basically build the broker, basically depending on which one they call, I build a different broker and supply nice. that and supply that to the service. Brian, how do you come up with these ideas? I don't know. I bash my head against the wall until it hurts, <laughs> stops, until it stops hurting. <laughs> which was so, the last week, week and a half. <laughs> so, so Australia gave us Chris Hemsworth and and Heath Ledger and Brian Parker, <laughs> basically, this is this is all I'm gonna remember when I talk about Australia. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk about the guy, dude. This is amazing. I'm telling you this right now. Just the fact that you're this is this is a real problem. This is a real world enterprise level problem. Mm -hmm. And 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 Daniel Roth, Steve Sanderson, if you're watching this, think about an overload capability for the same component. Brian here basically did it program. This is genius, man. Who are you? Who are you, bro? Seriously. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm looking at this right now and I'm thinking, I couldn't have thought of this in a million years. You're basically going and saying, I'm going to give you an override and whatever you return, it will satisfy the condition. That's amazing. This is, this is true software engineering for you right there. I'm sorry I interrupted you. You were saying something. Go ahead. Okay, you, you haven't got to the best part yet. So the best part is, I, I, I guess there's going to be people out there that want to be able to define this with just markup, mm -hmm. which was something you and I discussed last week sometime. And yeah, um, yeah. Yep. Yep. So I, I come up with this way of doing it. Oh, <laughs> so you can basically pass in whatever settings or setup you want to have. At the moment, and... I've only I've only written this one, but let's just show you how simple this is. Uh, let's go back to here um, where I show you. And so this is a, a class that is a component with no 
head uh, with no marker. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's just basically taking the parameters that we have on that piece that you just saw. And again, on parameters set, see it's with a cascading parameter, it knows mm -hmm. with parent. And okay, then so you got the null checking going on for you there with the bang. Nice. Yeah. Keep going. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then uh, basically it's doing exactly the same thing we were doing before. We're calling the function mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With, the, with the three parameters to configure it. So it's doing nothing differently other than being just able to do it. setting it on the fly. You're just making yeah. it out there. Oh, it man, that's even... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It causes a few little issues. Let me explain this. So mm -hmm. as we know, a render fragment is a delegate... We only, want to con we only want to run the part of the delegate that configures it once. So we have to do this. That's right. That's right. Ah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a little uh, a little hacky, but... Um, yeah. yeah, that's the only thing I don't like about this particular method, yeah. You know, you could use Pretty Blazor to do that if statement. And, and of then course, you have yes. all markup in there. But, uh, yeah. I, but it's still... The fact that you have to do this, you know. In basically, the basically, I've got two different delegates on here. I've got one for uh, running the uh, setup, and another one for um, drawing the markup. Yes. My God, Brian, this is this is really outstanding. So this is what this is what we talked about the other day when we were said let's just pass in markup in there. But I have I haven't thought of I would never have thought of being being able to do an over an overload. And allow the same contract to be returned. Outstanding, sir. The, you, you have my hat. I tip my hat off to you. This is this is real software engineering for you, right there. I can and, actually see a way forward with this now, with all the different um, data sources. So, yeah, I'm pretty. And happy. now, and now it can be, Brian. You know, would you agree this can be uh, modularized in terms of allowing any future data source, whatever yes. that may be. As long as it confirms and satisfies the co contract, it should yep. work just accordingly without having the client having to learn about your models necessarily. Mm -hmm. Outstanding, outstanding. Um, it, it took okay. a lot of um, took a lot of head beating. Into, um, I, 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 <laughs> I can tell. I'm telling you right now. Like this is this is why I appreciate you, brother. Because you know what you what you do here is that. You know, you are an engineer at heart, with so much experience. And I think what you're doing here is that you're basically showing the world, really, you know, what it's like to solve, you know, certain problems like these with the technology. This is what engineering is about. You're playing around with the tools that you have and seeing how much you can mold it in a way that matches your vision instead of bending, letting technology bend down your vision. You are bending technology to match your vision. And I really appreciate that about you. Okay, so the path forward, you know, how is this? Is this a POC or should we? Yeah, so uh, I've, I've, I've pushed this to a private repository called uh, Be Virtualized on my own GitHub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, it, it it's really um, doesn't have any. Uh, it's not test driven design, and but it's written okay. in, written in the, along the lines that it could be easily converted to. As you can see, I've set it up with brokers and services. Okay, so so here's my suggestion for our next session. We can start productionize this, you mm -hmm. know. So I'm just gonna help out with the productionization because you're the brains. You already came up with the, with the solution. We're just gonna, you know, kind of, you know, clean it up a little bit and make it a little bit productionizable, you know, so we can actually put it out there and make it a mm -hmm. product that people can download. This is this is really amazing. Thank you so much for sharing this today, Brian. Anything else from your side before we wrap up this session? I guess I should show them, show that it works. It probably it's probably a good idea to let people. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, a code that compiles anybody can do that. <laughs> okay, so um, this is uh, I don't even know how many records I've got hooking up to this at the moment. Oh, pretty limited. Probably only about five hundred at the moment. Mm -hmm. I kept on changing the number of records to um, to demonstrate to me that this is all worth it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is a, a normal virtualize. Um, so it still has some issues with the normal virtualize because you're still pulling all the data across. It doesn't do the... Um, Not the really roughly... doing actual pagination. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this is the two methods. So this is... Um, so either one of these, they both work identically the same. You really can't see any change. Um, Nice. This is doing this is doing proper calls. You'll see it um, actually 
Yeah, if you are in the console, F12, and bring it up. Wait, let me drag it. Why aren't you let me drag? There we go. Nice. I love the transition of Windows that Windows 11 does. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. At, at, least, at least we got something, right? <laughs> okay. <I should've... laughs> and Ooh, as you can... look at that. Look yeah. at that. Oh, oh, what am I doing here? So we're seeing the lovely transfers. Do, do you know how I know you're doing so, you know, it, it's pulling different sets of data. So yep. this is all old data context. You're pulling in the whole thing. Uh, it's It's pulling different values. I can yeah. see here, count 500 you're, is starting from ID 290, but if you open up the very first call, like yeah. if, you know, uh, if you scroll up on the left a little bit and then get the very first call, the yeah. weather forecast. Uh, yeah, see see how it's starting skip 207. So yeah. I see that it's, oh man, oh man, you are you are something else. You know, I'll tell you that. That's is, this is and, uh, outstanding. Oh. I've wired up the uh, cancelization token too. So if it has a huge number of records, say a million records, and you're dragging it up and down really fast, it actually cancels the request properly and everything. So amazing, amazing. I'm happy. All right, and I'm happy too. I'm happy for you that you're happy, but I'm also happy because a lot of people will see this and they will learn from it. This is a pattern that you're introducing here, a new way to think about. I mean, we asked everybody around the world to give us suggestions. But look how elegant the solution is. And I think that's how a lot of engineers should be thinking. You know, go out there and see what's out there and then com compile all, just like Brian said earlier, you know, compile all of this together and try to kind of come up with something genuine. This is what I love about this industry. And Brian, you're you're really, really good at it. You know, yeah, you look, I, a... I wouldn't have, I would not have been able to do it without yours and Eggle's Eggle's suggestions. Like I, I basically, it sort of was, a seed to the thoughts. You get what I mean. Here's a YouTube result. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Google G Google said, "What about me? You <laughs> you use me too." <laughs> it's saying I help too. <laughs> and <Brian>. she did. <laughs> Mr. Brian Parker, thank you so very much for showing us this today. Let's continue our sessions. Let's kick off our sessions again starting tomorrow and go through this in detail in a test-driven yep. matter. Let's get yep. this application, this package out the door and yep. uh, let the rest of the world learn from it. Thank you so very much. Thank you all for watching. And as usual, if you have any questions for me, more like for Brian, really, you know, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And please don't, go, don't forget to like and subscribe. Brian and I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Thanks, Thank Brian. You.